The Los Angeles Department of Water and Power's Director of Water Operations, Martin Adams, returned to the Inyo Supervisors Tuesday with a project plan concept for the Owens Dry Lake. Bottom line, DWP wants to cut water use for dust control at the lake by half. They want to pump water from under the lake to put on it, limit future dust control that they would have to do, and create and protect habitat. Asked pointedly if DWP will leave water that they save at the dry lake in the Owens Valley, Martin Adams said, quote, I am not in a position to make a commitment that's a water commission decision. Adams and others have implied that a reduction in water use on the dry lake would mean more water for ranchers and others in the Owens Valley. Clearly, that is not certain. DWP's new Owens Lake plan would cost Los Angeles between $600 million and a $1 billion. Most doubt that L.A. would leave much saved water in the Owens Valley at that price. Adam spent an hour explaining the newly proposed plan to the supervisors. Before L.A. issued its own plan, DWP was working with numerous local agencies in the Owens Lake Master Plan Group. In response to concerns that DWP would now bypass that group, Adams said he would meet with them soon. He said DWP's plan came out of part of the master plan work. The DWP concept would use gravel, tillage of soil and ridges of dirt to control dust on the lake bed instead of water, or at least some water. At one point, Air Pollution Control District Director Ted Shady stood up to say that his agency never required DWP to use water on the dry lake dust. He said that was their decision. Shady said APCD had encouraged L.A. to approve out other dust control methods, and he said that they originally would have preferred the city use gravel instead of water. Adams had earlier said gravel is a lot more expensive than water. In his explanation of this new plan, Adams said DWP wants to hold dust control to 45 square miles. He said, we believe under the law we have satisfied our obligations. L.A. is now suing the state airport and the APCD to end additional future dust control measures. Adams added that DWP believes dust in the lake area comes from sources other than DWP's activities. Adams also described a process of at least five phases in this new plan, so the transitions would not create problems for new penalties from the Air Pollution Control District. Adams said DWP would work with the master plan group, the county and state and federal agencies on this new plan, which would also require an environmental review. He said, quote, we will work with state and local officials to resolve the legal and regulatory issues in order to warrant a major investment on our part. Adams said DWP commissioners would be looking at this concept at their meeting on Tuesday. With as much as 47,000 acre feet of water saved from Owens Lake mitigation, what would DWP do with that water? Well, Adams claims LA will work with the ranching community for more. Ranchers have suffered losses by DWP over the past decade or so. They face more losses this year. Again, Adams told Sierra Wave Media after his presentation that he could not commit that water saved on the dry lake would stay in the Owens Valley. Supervisors encouraged him to meet with the Owens Lake Master Plan group here locally. Supervisor Rick Pucci said it was important to leave water in the Owens Valley. He said, quote, it's extremely important to develop this point in advance, end quote. We'll have more on supervisors and citizens' comments about DWP on later broadcasts. Well, the so-called sequestration in Washington, D.C. made across the board cuts kind of willy-nilly in many services because the two parties just couldn't agree on a budget. Mono Supervisor Tim Alper said that that policy cut $2.4 million out of the Yosemite National Park budget. As a result, Yosemite officials said they would not start clearing Tioga Pass from their end until May 15th. Alpers has asked the park superintendent 
to let Mono County get going from the east entrance of the park to preserve the hope of opening Tioga Pass for Memorial Day. Alper's request went to Yosemite Superintendent Don Neubacher. Alpers said in an email to Neubacher, quote, I am respectfully requesting that our snow removal crews be allowed to enter the park immediately and begin operations from the east entrance. Alpers said that in the past, Mono County and Caltrans have been able to enter the park on April 15th and plow to Olmstead Point, and then the park plows from the other side. Supervisor Alpers told Neubacher that the economy in Mono County is in bad shape like everywhere else, and a late opening of the Tioga Road would be a major setback to the short summer economy. Well, last week, the Mono supervisors did approve a cooperative agreement with Yosemite to plow Toy Tioga Road. Superintendent Neubacher replied to Tim Alpers that park surveillance crews were on the road this week, and he hoped to have more news. Later in the week, he said that he knows that this is an urgent matter. Tourists can't drive from uh, the west side over to our side if Tioga Pass is still closed. So we're waiting to hear more from Yosemite, and we'll let you know when we do. In other road opening news, the town of Mammoth Lakes plan to start plowing the road into the Lakes Basin and then soon into the Reds Meadow Valley. Caltrans says they also plan to start plowing into Minaret Vista at the end of the month. Well, at around 3 p.m. East Coast time Monday, a horrible tragedy. Two bombs exploded near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. At last word, three were killed and more than 140 injured. We checked to see if any of the running community of the Eastern Sierra might have been there. Andrew Castor, head coach of Mammoth Track Club and in close touch with the event, said that one Mammoth man was there as a commentator and Olympic runner Meb Kavleski was there, although not racing due to an earlier injury. Castor said no one from here was hurt. Castor said Josh Cox of the Mammoth Track Club was at the Boston Marathon as a commentator for Universal Sports. He said Cox, who has 56,000 Twitter followers, also went to work telling families of runners how to deal with the explosion situation. Castor said his phone was also ringing off the hook with emails and tweets flying in from those concerned about who might have gone to the marathon. He said the last two major marathons were struck with tragedy. The New York Marathon was dealt a blow by Hurricane Sandy. Castor said that was an act of God. This incident, he said, in Boston was an act by someone who thinks he's God. In the face of this tragedy, Castor said it's important to keep going forward. Nobody stops us, he said. That's the mentality of the distance runner. Mammoth Mayor Pro Tem and runner Rick Wood did not go to the Boston Marathon. He said he had just run the Los Angeles Marathon four weeks ago and was not ready for another one. Wood said, this is such a terrible thing. I think of the running community and people who do this are by and large good people. They are working hard to try to achieve a personal best. What a terrible thing to happen. Well, Andrew Castor said the Mammoth Track Club planned to dedicate Tuesday morning's practice to the fallen victims. He said, we'll complete a couple of laps and observe a moment of silence. We'll be right back. 